Tonight on Team Voodoo Adventures, we're looking back at our favorite moments from the show as we wrap up another season in the swamp. Then get ready for a double dose of tasty goodness as we'll head into the Coburn's kitchen for a local favorite. Nice. That's some melt in your mouth, blackberry pie. Then meet up with our friends at Crawfish Town USA for another staple of South Louisiana. And with new laws in place for the coming deer season, we'll show you the proper way to cape your trophy deer in the field. All that and more tonight on Team Voodoo Adventures. Presented by Coburn Supply Company, Coburn's has you covered. Voodoo Performance Exhaust and Sniper 2 Odor Elite, your outdoor odor response. Sponsored by Marshmutt.com, Spiker Brands USA, Bayou Hunting Expeditions, Mike Swamp Tours, Gator Tail, and Crawfish Town USA. Additional support for the show provided by It's been an exciting season for Jude and the team here in the Atchafalaya Basin, one chock full of adventure. And we thank you for joining us on this journey from swamp to table here in South Louisiana. Be sure to catch up with the series on our website, www.teamvoodoo.tv, to see all of Jude and the team's pivotal moments this year. But first, we're heading into the Coburn's Kitchen for some good eats. Let's see what the gang is getting into. All right, guys, we're out here at Coburn Supply Kitchen and Bath Showroom with my two ladies, and they have a dish for y'all that's for uh, my, my, my special people out there like me that have a sweet tooth, all right? Today we're gonna be making a blackberry pie. These ladies went out, did a little bit of blackberry picking. So uh, Lacey and I picked these amazing blackberries. They're very plump, and uh, that's really, this is really what you want it to look like uh, when you're picking them. They need to be the dark color. Um, as little red as possible. Some of these are a little ripe, like uh, Jude said. It's a little early in the season, but they're super sweet. One of the pluses to having a hot hunting season, if there are any pluses, are your bounty is gonna be a little bit ripe early. That way it's not, you know, waiting until the prime time in late May um, when things are starting to bloom. Downfall is your harvest sometimes suffers with hunting. Squirrels, ducks, deer, all the fun things you try and chase. but. This is where we make the best of it, and this is what cages do. Yeah, so Lacey and I took our pups, and we decided to go pick our fresh blackberries, because there's nothing better than fresh blackberries. And uh, we have an amazing recipe. Right, my, uh, my mom actually provided the recipe for us. We're gonna go ahead and share it with everybody out there. So we're gonna do uh, two cups of blackberries, and I have some in here since we, we picked a few out of there. Mine is just, right? Maybe five or six or seven, 20 or 10. So we're adding a little bit more. And then what you wanna do uh, is two cups of blackberries, and then you're gonna do a cup of water. And depending on the blackberries, how sweet they are, the recipe calls for a cup, but I think that we're not gonna put as much as um, if they were really, really sweet. And then uh, once that gets boiling, uh, then we'll add the cornstarch. And we have these pie crust that uh, my amazing mama does from scratch. And so we are uh, doing some nice, beautiful pie crust that uh, mama Wiyogi has given me. So, <laughs> good job. So, this is our amazing Thermidor 48 inch commercial range. And uh, as you can see, the uh, gas is super high. Um, so, it's very flexible. It's a star burner. 
and on the star burner, um, the great thing about it is most uh, burners are round, and on the star you get about 20% more surface, so it's actually uh, more efficient. Which is why we need it over here. Correct. A little more fun. That's right. Oh, so we need it to burrow. So the consistency you want is to start breaking up the blackberries a little bit, getting it soft. So as you're boiling, you add the sugar. When you're taking a bite into the blackberry pie, you don't want to really actually get into a blackberry. You kind of want it to be like a paste. Right. So we're waiting until all of the sugar dissolves into Goes the together. water. And then your berries are getting nice and, and soft. Yes. They're going to break apart a little bit easier. Exactly. The boil is done. And we want to get that cornstarch to thicken it up a little bit before we put it in the pie crust. The homemade from scratch pie crust. Perfection. Look at that measure. Um, and as we're waiting for that to cool, we're going to do the, because our, because us southern gals, we don't do nothing just plain. No. We gotta do fancy. It has to be pretty. It has to taste good and look good too. Right. So um, the way we're gonna do the top is uh, kind of like the uh, crisscross. When you're doing the crisscross, what you wanna do is go every other one this way. So you wanna do five one way and five the other. Um, but so that the, all the sizes are the same, you want to do every other. That's Momo's technique. Girl, that's Momo's technique. How you knew that? I told you that. Because Momo does the same thing. <laughs> Blackberry consistency is good. And uh, I don't know, maybe. It's getting thicker. Does the cornstarch just thickening it a little bit? Be careful with that. Mm. Perfect. So now we're going to start with the, um, the pie crust on top with our little fancy schmancy design. So Lacey is gonna help me. I get to select. And I need you to, um, yes, give me the other piece, please. This one. And so what we're gonna do is put five. There we go. Then you wanna use aluminum foil around the sides and that'll help get the inside cooked, but not the crust. Uh, so brown and dry. And then we're gonna pop it. In the oven? In the oven. What kind of oven is that? This is a Thermador convection. Thermador convection. It's even got a cloth on there. Put this in the Thermador convection. Most recipes, most most mama and mama recipes say, just do it till the crust is brown. But it's approximately 20 minutes and then you're gonna wanna turn the pie and then do it for about 30 minutes. Let's see. All right, let me get Nice. Into my mouth. That's some melt in your mouth blackberry pie. So there you go, this is a, Lacey's family's property, amazing harvest. Yes. And uh, our sweat and hard work in this kitchen, it's just slaving over it. And we put some love in there, so it's gonna be perfect and better, so. So we're gonna cut a piece. And one of the best things Delicious. to put on a pie, it's kinda like gumbo and potato salad. It's like you can't have gumbo without potato salad. Well, you can't have pie without ice cream. It's that hot and cold. Nice. It definitely thickened up a good bit. Snap it on there. It doesn't have to be the prettiest as long as it tastes the best. That's right. So normally. Yeah, but it's it it's not gonna taste good it unless it's doing right. that. Let me just add a scoop. I think this pie needs two. Oh, now y'all talking my language. Now we making a smiley face. <laughs> All right, guys, there y'all have it. Blackberry pie with the queens of the basin. Go ahead and follow us, Facebook, Instagram, 
uh, subscribe to our website, also our YouTube channel. See what Team Voodoo Adventures is doing weekly. Y'all go ahead and stay tuned for more Team Voodoo Adventures. Right here, get close, get close. Yeah. Smells delicious. Where's the spoon? I'm hungry. <laughs>Coming up next, we'll look back on one of our favorite fishing moments before heading into the Crawfish Town Kitchen to cook up a staple of Cajun cuisine. And you left me far behind, never knowing what to find. And you always wanted to be free. broken. Coburn's Kitchen and Bath Showroom has you covered on the highest quality plumbing, appliances, and lighting for your home or your home away from home. We feature the best brands on the market like American Standard, LK, KitchenAid, Progress Lighting, and many more. With the best quality service you expect and deserve, Coburn's is proud to provide what you need when you need it. And Team Voodoo knows there's only one place to prepare their favorite meals and clean up after a day in the swamp. We're using their amazing stuff. we got to thank them. Visit us at Coburn's.com for a location near you. Sniper 2 Odor Elite. One bottle is like having an entire arsenal in your hunting bag. And it's not just an odor eliminator. It cleans and disinfects by killing up to 99.9% .9 of bacteria in 60 seconds, making it the perfect companion to keep with you on the hunt and at home. Long day hauling in the catch? Snipe that fish smell and bacteria. Keep your cleaning tools even cleaner. Snipe odors all over the house, and it's perfectly safe for the kids and the hunting dogs. Sniper 2, your outdoor odor response. It's another beautiful day. Ah, life is better at the beach. Ah, oh, no. There's got to be a better way. There is the Spiker. Just spike it. It's portable. It's convenient. It fits easily in your beach bag. The Spiker Lifestyle Holder is available everywhere. Visit us at spikercompany.com. Proudly made in America. Just spike it. Anytime Team Voodoo finds themselves in the field, they rely on quality gear to get them through the hunt. That's why this team looks no further than MarshMutt.com as their number one source for practically all their outdoor accessories. From hunting apparel and equipment, duck decoys, calls and blinds, turkey calls, gun and ammo accessories, all the way to bow fishing gear. And they'll even suit your mud up too. MarshMutt.com, proud sponsor of Team Voodoo Adventures and your one-stop shop for all your outdoor gear.
Hey guys, we're out here at Crawfish Town USA with Chef Dusty. Today we're gonna to be doing a old fashioned crawfish etouffee. And he's gonna take us step by step. Y'all seen some crawfishing that we've done already. He's gonna show us how he puts it all together, mixes it together in their very special own way. And it's probably something that you can find on the, uh, the menu over here, right? Yeah, we do a specials with it all the time. D, while you're getting everything ready, uh, is there a bunch of different ways? Uh, I'm sure everybody has their very own special way you could do uh, a crawfish shade to face. Mm -hmm. uh, is, what's some of the favorite, your favorite ways that it gets done? Well, I like doing like this, the, the old fashioned way, because growing up with my grandparents, uh, you know, they weren't the most skilled with their knife skills. So right now everything's so small dice, everything's so perfection. Back then they used to rough chop everything, throw everything in there, and then you get a lot of the flavors. The, you get bell peppers, the onions, you get all of that come through. So I like this style the best way out of anybody's uh, etouffee right now. Okay, so to first start off this old fashioned etouffee, we put some butter in and we're gonna let that start melting. And you could be very generous with the amount of butter you put in. The more butter, the better it tastes to me. So we'll go get that start going there. And this is the, uh, the vegetables that we had, the, the bell peppers and the onions. So once this starts melting all around there, we'll add that, we'll start sweating them. And then um, once they're sweat enough to where they get transparent, we can take them and we're gonna go ahead and we'll add the crawfish in later on and, and the crawfish down seasoning and you know, get everything going. Okay, so when you see your, you know, you can start to kind of see through your onions and you're getting a lot of that reduction from whenever you have the vegetables in there, then you could get ready to start adding your crawfish. So we use our crawfish that we peel next door at the Fresh Market. So it's uh, one pound packages that we do next door at our Fresh Seafood Market. So I'm gonna add two pounds into here. Um, and you know, you don't wanna worry about that extra uh, liquid in there, put everything in, cause most of that's fat. Um, so you could have that all in there. Um, and then just adds to the flavor. It does, it adds to the flavor. And I like to season mine once it's in here, cause you can actually see and uh, you can change it if you want to add more seasoning. You know, you could always do it by taste there. So I don't like to pre-season the crawfish. Um, so from here, you can kind of start stirring that in. So I'm gonna add some seasoning here shortly, uh, and we'll just start letting it letting it thicken up by reducing. So when you're ready, you can take it and you could just. You know, liberally add seasoning, and like I said, you could always go back and make sure it's enough to your liking. So I like to add it, and then we're gonna stir it in there. And then once it's reduced down enough, we'll taste it, and then we'll adjust if we need to. How long have you been a chef? Uh, I've been a, a chef since uh, pretty much 2009 when I graduated culinary school. Uh, I've been cooking all my life. Before, before that, what, what pushed you? into doing culinary? I, I've always been in the restaurant industry. Um, I only did a, a little stint in the oil field and I didn't like it. Um, I didn't like the instability of it. Um, and I figured, you know, as a career choice, you know, someone's always gonna need to eat. So that's what kind of pushed me to this field. Okay, uh, so once it reduces down, you have this nice, you know, thicker consistency of a uh, little sauce here. And that's one thing that with the, uh, the old fashioned, you don't have a ton of sauce weighing it down, you let the crawfish and the vegetables shine. So we're gonna put this, serve this right in this bowl, right on top of the rice, kinda get some all the way around, some of that gravy in there, a little sauce. Just like that, okay? We get some more of that. Yeah. Just like that. And then, to add it off, since it's, uh, crawfish season we have uh, this garnish of fresh ball crawfish all right guys you've seen us take it from the pond down here to crawfish town chef dusty cooked it up for us y'all stay tuned there's more great dishes on the rest of team voodoo adventures Still to come on Team Voodoo Adventures, we're heading into the Basin Taxidermy Workshop to show you the proper method to cape your trophy deer in the field. Stay tuned.
Are you looking for a taste of the South Louisiana hunting lifestyle? How about hunting 1,700 acres of prime land for the finest whitetail, waterfowl, hog, and alligator? Right here in the heart of Cajun country, Bayou Hunting Expeditions can exceed your wildest expectations. Whether you're an avid hunter or a beginner, you can enjoy a first-class hunting experience. With our team of expert guides, you'll be given a rich history on the Cajun heritage of survival here in the swamps of Louisiana. It's time to start your next expedition. After a long day of adventures, Team Voodoo knows the best place to relax and enjoy the bounty of the Atchafalaya. Crawfish Town, USA. Built inside an authentic barn from the early 1900s, Crawfish Town is home to some of Louisiana's most respected and award-winning chefs serving the best in seafood, crawfish, and Cajun cuisine. Conveniently located off of I-10 at the Henderson Cecilia exit, come enjoy the true taste of South Louisiana, Crawfish Town, USA. Hey guys, Jude with Team Voodoo Adventures. I'm here today at Basin Taxidermy with Mr. John. What he's gonna do for us today is something every deer hunter that goes out of state, what it's actually called is caping out the deer. You have to take the skin completely off the head and clean the skull plate. For whenever you take it across state lines so that you can actually save room, get rid of the bone. In some states, it's actually a law to transport across state lines and that's due to CWD, chronic wasting disease. So today we're here with Mr. John to do it the correct way. All right, Mr. John, go ahead and tell us what's the first step when we're looking at this, this animal. So the first step you're gonna do is we're gonna cut a, a, a Y cut back here, which is gonna go from the burr to the center of the base of the skull here, from each side, and then come down the neck, maybe five, six inches at most. We'll start off there and we'll, we'll cape out and go along the ears. You always keep your knife against the bone. And constantly pull, I'll show you, I'll pull with my left hand and I'm cutting with my right constantly. Mr. John, does it matter how much meat stays on the hide? It does, does that affect the... it, it doesn't matter for the taxidermist and uh, it, it, what it is is once you're gonna, if you put it in a freezer at some point, that meat's gonna take a good while for it to defrost. So it's better with as little meat as possible. Yes. But if you're nervous and you don't wanna punch a hole in your hide, go ahead and uh, go ahead and leave the meat on it. When questioned, <laughs> yeah, just leave, the meat leave some meat on. Okay, we'll cut the other side, cut through the ear butt and in. I'm pulling with my left as I'm cutting with my right, cut through the ear canal. Just once you get through the ear canal, just be careful because there's not much left there between the skin and the meat. Alright. What we can do is take a little bit of borax, put it on here so that we can grab it. Take our screwdriver, and you get against the base of that, that horn right there, underneath that burr. And it peels away from the horn. You can either do this, or you can do it with the, with the knife. Either way is fine. This way there's no chance in cutting the hair and you don't have a ball spot on your beautiful trophy. It's extremely important you take good care of your cape because good capes are very hard to come by. You can buy them. We do, we do occasionally buy some off the internet, but you're looking anywhere from two to 300 uh, if it's an extremely large cape up to $400. Guys, anybody can do this. I have a, 
My, my youngest son is 11 years old when he started doing this for me. And he does it in, in 13 minutes from start to finish. And like I said, anybody can do this. Just take your time with it. And you have a nice, nice beautiful cape to be mounted. To finish off your, your, your skull, get your skull off of your head, uh, your horns off of your skull. Just cut a line here right behind the eye sockets up to, to just below the eye socket. You can stop about even with the, the bottom of the eye socket. And you flip it over and you cut an angle down towards your first cut. Just cut here, straight down towards your first cut. When you meet the other cut, this thing will pop right off. All right, guys, that's the full, complete info on how to cape out a trophy deer. The host of Team Voodoo Television here with Mr. John at Basin Taxidermy. Y'all go ahead and follow us. If you have any questions or comments, let us know. We'll see y'all next time. Hope you enjoyed the season this year, but the adventures aren't over yet. Be sure to join us next year as the adventures in the swamp continue. For now, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for tons of entertainment from the team leading up to next year's season. Like us on Facebook as well for all the adventures that await us on Team Voodoo Adventures.